name's Zoe, and this is... Grampy Bob, and we live in Ontario, Canada. We watch T-J-V every day. Trucker Josh, thumbs up. Good morning, everybody. It's a bit of a chilly morning today. Just going for a walk around the property and enjoying the morning air. I got up at six this morning to get some work done on the computer. And Bert's still sleeping. So me, Diesel and Chevy, just the big guys are out here for a walk, getting the, oh, that morning air into the lungs, you know? I love mornings. I'm sure people, some people think I hate mornings. Actually, mornings is my favorite time of day. It's the the waking up part that sometimes I have problems with. But don't worry, I'm told that once we have a child, that problem will be fixed and I will enjoy getting up at the crack of dawn every day. So we're just waiting on a child. <laughs> we got no news to give you on that front yet, but uh, we'll let you know when we do. Hopefully soon. Come on, boys. Come on, let's keep going. So weird, these uh, jack pines, I believe that's what they're called, jack pines, northern pines, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they need direct sunlight, because you see all these branches at the bottom of this tree here. No needles, only at the top where the sunlight can reach it the most. I need to go and cut off all those dead branches so that it'll give the tree a chance to, uh, you know, get nutrients to where it's needed more than trying to get all these branches back to life. At least that's what I'm told. That'll help. But I got plenty of stuff to do like this stuff. Got to clean that up. Got to clean that up. Got to clean that up. And how much of this am I worried about doing right now? Zero, because right now, I'm just enjoying my morning, my peace and quiet. It is a little chilly, like I was saying though. Like it, it, it was a cold night. It feels like September, and it, I'm filming this in August still. And uh, we're having quite a, a cold snap for August. It's usually really hot here at this time of year. But we've had a lot more rain than usual, uh, from my recent memory, the last couple of years. But my uh, father-in-law, he's been around just a little bit longer than me. He says that, no, this is actually pretty normal. There's usually a little bit of a cold snap in August. At least that's what he was telling Britt. So I guess I'm okay with that. I'm sure it'll heat up again soon. Oh, but that sunlight feels good. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, what's, a, what's that over there? Oh, it's Mr. Mallard. Oh, scared him away again. Mr. Mallard. Got a lot of Mallard ducks around here. They have a bunch of nests along the creek. A lot of beaver dams too. There's one dam here. There's a really big dam just around the corner there. Almost fell off a cliff here. Yikes. And uh, another dam by there. But I think we took care of the beaver problem this year. Uh, I'm sure there's more of them though. We found one. And uh, he was evicted, trespassing. So gotta see if he's got any more of his buddies around here that we need to evict as well. Cause they ruin the property. They ruin the property. And they got plenty of like crown land that they can go and build their dams on and other creeks and other places. This, this here, like all of this open space here this used to all be forced. Like those big trees out there, that's all ours too, right? But there's a fine line over there. The beavers have cleared this all over the years. Uh, they gotta do what they gotta do. And I gotta do what I gotta do. All just trying to claim our own little piece of paradise, you know? They can go get their own. <laughs> uh. 
What'd you find? What'd you find? I want to go down to the lower yard. I mowed down the lower yard yesterday, and uh, I hadn't mowed it in a while. So there's a lot of little baby trees that had started growing, and we're trying to fill in the yard with more trees, right? Less open space, more trees. So I, uh, I let a lot of them stay. I, I think I left close to 20 little baby trees to see how they grow. We're going to go down there and take a look at them today. Man, these guys have grown a lot this year. I say that every time I walk past them. They grow up so fast. Okay, so there's one right there that I left. Let's see what happens to this or what comes to this. There's a couple here. This little guy here. And a couple more down here. My mower deck is not mowing very evenly. Man, that grass looks terrible. But this whole area here is, it used to all just be wild, right? And I cut it down, so it's not exactly level. We got this little guy here. We got, oh, and then a little guy here. Little guy here. And I'll show you what these turn into as they get bigger. This guy here was the same size as those last ones last fall or last end of summer, around this time, I guess late summer, we let it grow and this is what it's turned into this year. So it grows really fast. These guys here, they started just this spring. They're already growing pretty good. And uh, they turn into this eventually in a couple of years, doesn't take long. And you got some bigger trees, and then eventually they become that. So we're trying to get uh, all of these little trees here to grow as well. You see all these little guys here? Now we might not keep them all, but uh, we'll keep a bunch of them. We'll see which ones fare the best, you know? But these just grew in the last couple of weeks, so we'll see what happens. Maybe this will be like a nice wooded area in several years instead of this big open space. I think I heard my wife calling me, so I guess the morning stroll is over. The dogs already took off, abandoned me. As soon as they hear her voice, they're gone. <laughs> we have another tree here, see? There couple all in here I'm trying to fill in this whole area so there's close to probably like 20 of them at least another one there this guy here's popping up pretty quick and we transplanted two yesterday as well into the front area there yeah she's whistling at me I better go so we're back here in the front in this area where we transplanted those pines this spring and uh, I moved another tree here now a little bit of a bigger one. We'll see how it takes, huh? Not sure if it's gonna take or not, but took it out of the bush and figured I'd bring it out front here to keep its little little siblings happy. See this guy? And I replaced the one here. Uh, this was that uh, pine that had died. I think it was like a blue spruce or something, Colorado spruce, I don't know. But uh, it didn't take and it had died, so I replaced it with this. Mm, this thing doesn't look too happy either. But we'll see, we'll keep trying. I mean, we've got plenty to pick from. <laughs> and there it is. This is the one that I had replaced that I was just talking about. It didn't make it. Most of them seem to be taking pretty well over there, though. She has awakened. I think that means stay away. That was one of the best sleeps I've ever had. If it hadn't been interrupted by Chevy. Yeah, there was a deer eating that new tree, the big one I was just showing you over there. Chevy saw him and howled, howled at him. That was that. a little really big, ugly, scary dog. Yeah, he does that. At least he tells us when something's in the yard. Yeah. I'm going to go get my coffee, too. 
the morning is not complete until you have your coffee. Da, 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 boom! Yeah! Hello, my friend. Hello. I made this coffee before I went outside for my walk. I wish I had it for my walk, but... Whoa! Calm down. No! It's a chilly morning, so it seems fitting. We've got deer. I'm trying to sneak up on them. Shh. Looking tasty. Oh, oh, oh. They're looking at me. No, they're coming closer. They're not sure if they see me or not. They're just staring at me. Move them this way. They didn't go far. They're a little skittish. That's okay. Just trying to get close. There he is. See how close he'll let me get. There's both of them there. Straight ahead. Won't let me get any closer than this. It's probably the deer that was eating my tree this morning. Of all the trees in the forest, of all the trees in the forest, it chose to go and eat my tree. The one I transplanted yesterday. That was a special one, apparently. <laughs> They'll be back. Oh, bugs, bugs, bugs. So we're back in the truck. We're in southwestern Manitoba right now, headed up towards northern Alberta. And uh, we're just out of construction. Construction thingy right now. You know, I should just turn the truck right off. We've been waiting here for a while. Uh, they did this thing that they do again in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Look at this beside me here. Look at this pavement. You see that? They put loose gravel on it and then just let your windshield get destroyed while it packs down. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone do anywhere. In Manitoba and Saskatchewan do this all the time. So they're doing the other side of the road right now, right? And uh, we're just waiting, there's one lane open up ahead, so we're waiting for the traffic to come this way through so that we can go through. But usually they'll do both both lanes like this, like they're probably just doing this on this side of the lane or whatever up ahead. They'll put loose gravel like this on both sides, and then they'll just put little signs up on the shoulder like, oh, slow down to 40 kilometers an hour when meeting traffic. Meanwhile, the speed limit's 100 kilometers an hour. Now, how many people do you think actually slow down to 40 when you pass them on the highway? No, they're giving her kicking up stones and dust every time and we get big chips in our windshield and this windshield is expensive it involves several hundred dollars to replace this thing and you can't sue the road crews because they put up their signs right not their fault people didn't slow down well then put the cops out here or something i don't know 40 mile, uh, 40 kilometers an hour is about 30 miles an hour okay so the speed limit here is 60 65 miles an hour and when you meet traffic on this two-lane road, according to the little signs they put on the side of the road, you're supposed to slow down to 30 miles an hour to meet the traffic. But like I was just saying, nobody actually slows down. So it really frustrates me when they do construction work like this in Manitoba and Saskatchewan. It's the only places on the planet that I've been to, so only places in Canada and the US that I've seen that do this on highways. Like this is a federal highway. This is uh, Trans Canada 16. So it's a main highway through Canada, main artery. A lot of trucks that go through here. And uh, when you travel down here after they do this, it's just like a cloud of dust behind you, right? So all these trucks flying down the highway, even if you slow down to 30 miles an hour, 
they're kicking up so much dust you can't even see where you're going it's like driving through the fog and then suddenly you're meeting traffic in the fog and they're throwing stones at you you're stone throwing stones at them and everyone's just getting mad because everyone's getting stone chips in their paint and stone chips in their windshield yet they keep doing it like this no matter how much we we you know send our emails in saying what are you doing why do you do it this way no one else does this is dangerous it is what it is right it is what it is they don't listen it's the cheapest way I guarantee it they do it because it's cheap at the expense of everyone's vehicles and it's not these construction guys fault either it's they're just doing their jobs they're doing what they're told to do there you go you see these vehicles coming past here they're on the loose gravel well, at least they're moving over for us so that they're not kicking up too many stones in our at our vehicles but. see and now because the construction guys here they slow down but you know these people don't usually slow down if there's nobody watching they'll fly past you on this loose gravel at 100 kilometers an hour 60 miles an hour And it's just a really, really cheap, lazy way of fixing the roads. Cheap and lazy. I don't like it at all. I don't know if you picked that up or not and gathered that. I don't like it. Well, we made it through that terrible construction zone without any stone chips. Hopefully there's no more like that. So I vented, I feel better now. Now you know how I feel about it. Ah, uh, they gotta fix it somehow, eh? If that's the way they choose to do it, that's the way they choose to do it. I'm not in charge, I just drive a truck. So we're in Saskatchewan province now. One province uh, west of my home province of Manitoba. I'm thinking we might get to Saskatoon tonight. We might just get to Yorkton. I need to get at least another three hours down the road. And then from there, if we can make it three hours yet, go to bed, start early tomorrow. I'll only have a thousand kilometers or what, 620 miles to do tomorrow. That I can do because I'll have 13 hours to do it in, right? So that shouldn't be a problem. Then we'll get there tomorrow night, Fort McMurray. I spent a few nights here at this ESSO, or this ESSO co-op, whatever this is, this co-op hard lock. kind of funny when I take Brit along on the truck. <laughs> Almost every place we stop by, it doesn't matter where we go, I'm like, oh yeah, I spent a night there. Yep, spent a night there. Yep, slept there a couple times. Yep, stopped here. Oh, they got great food there. Yeah, oh, I know this place. Oh, if you want this, you go over here. You know, if you want great parking, you go here. But if you want a gravel parking lot, you go <laughs> After a while, you just start to... Uh, I'm starting to feel like my dad now, I guess. Because my dad used to talk like that when I was a kid all the time. I'd go on the truck with him and he would just be able to... He had all the best stops memorized, exactly where they were, and I was so amazed. I was like, wow, you've been to so many places. Now I've been to all the same places many, many, many times over. Now I, now I sound like him. <laughs> I've been over the road since 2011. So that's uh, eight years. Yeah, eight years that I've been over the road, and I was local for five years before that. So all together, been driving for what is that 13 years 13 years I've been driving truck Whew. doesn't feel like that long I still I still got a long way to go I got another 30 years before I can even think about retiring a little more I'm probably 35 years yikes by the time I retire I'll be able to say that I've been driving truck almost 50 years <laughs> Oh, unless if those robots take my job. Oh. oh, man. Oh, we went straight to bed. Uh, so we stopped in a town, uh, near a town called Defoe, Saskatchewan. At uh, the 24-7 Travel Center, that's what it's called. Right over there. So just got a good night's sleep. I'm ready to start the next day. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you then. Don't forget to share the video because YouTube doesn't like to recommend YouTube videos anymore. It's really weird. But uh, if you think other people should see this, hey, you'll have to recommend it. So I'll see you later. Take care.
Hi everyone, this is Chris from Coconut Creek, Florida, and you're watching Trucker Josh on TJV.